When I was a kid, one of the pipe dreams I had was being able to one day pilot the USS Enterprise. Now that dream died off when I was pretty young, but the idea of having a remote control Enterprise was always something I really was excited about. But based on the design of the USS Enterprise, it wasn't the kind of thing that was ever going to be possible. Until it was. This here is the 50th anniversary USS Enterprise remote controlled drone from Air Hogs. It's foam construction and it's light enough that a couple of fans are able to power it and they've designed it in such a way that even though it's got the drive section, which doesn't drive anything in this case, hanging off the back of it, it's still able to keep balanced, or so they say. I picked this up on clearance at the local Canadian Tire for $74 and I checked on Amazon Prime and they're available for $79 there, so you can go ahead and get one if you want to pick one up after this little review. Be aware that there's only four available at the time of filming this video though, so you might want to hurry. So we're going to dig into the box here and see what we've got. Now right off the bat we can see the Enterprise itself. In order to make it stable enough for flight and to make it as light as possible, they've made the saucer section pretty much hollow. It's just a grid. So we'll go ahead and take it out of the box. It's held into place by two plastic clips uh, that come through the back and that are just packing taped on. So if you're opening one of these, you're going to have to cut that off first or peel it. It doesn't take too much to get it off there. There we have the ship itself. The saucer section is made out of plastic and as I said, it's just a grid. And the drive section is made out of very light foam with some plastic detailing. The nacelles have plastic pieces here where you would usually see the blue glow from the ship itself. It's held onto a piece of plastic by a couple of not quite cable ties, they're little like twist ties. And it's free. Now you can't really say there's a ton of detailing on this because the drive section is well done, but the saucer section is obviously just a ghost of its former self. They left enough space to put NCC-1701A on this, showing that it's the version of the USS Enterprise that first showed up in Star Trek IV A Voyage Home. So this is the Constitution class refit, which explains the more square nacelles, and it doesn't have anything to do with the redesign in the J.J. Abrams movies. Overall, it feels like it's pretty sturdy and stable. It's pretty standard fare for the air hog stuff. It's not going to put up with a ton of abuse because, again, this is just foam, and once this breaks off, it's going to throw off the aerodynamics. But uh, they've counterbalanced the weight of the drive section by putting the battery up front, which should mean that the balancing point should be pretty much, yeah, somewhere in between the four blades. Other than that, it's a pretty standard design for a drone with the four blades there, 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 and there. If it was to break off, if you wanted to try and salvage it, you could probably get away with moving the battery more towards the center and moving the center of gravity, but I guess the ultimate goal is not to destroy it. That being said, it may happen by the end of the video. Also included in the box, of course, is the controller. You're not going to be able to get a drone very far without it. It's got some nice detailing on it. It's a grayish white. Uh, again, it says Star Trek NCC-1701A. Uh, it's got the standard fare for a drone. It's got uh, your uh, acceleration, your height, your uh, directional, and uh, it's got the trimming controls as well. So uh, if it's not perfectly balanced out of the box, you can adjust it to get it working right. It also appears there's sound effects, which we're probably going to hear when we power it up, because there is a sound effects on and off switch here, and you can see that there is two vents, but only one of them is open, and it's for a speaker. There's two buttons on the top here, two triggers. One's red, one's white. Uh, the red one has a play button on it, so I'm assuming that's to automatically upload to YouTube? No, no. It's probably to play audio, I would imagine. And this is also cool. It came with a stand so that you can put it on display when you're not using it. And it looks like the pieces are designed to just snap together. Just like that. And of course, with the stand installed, you can go ahead and set it, and it holds it right by the saucer section. So we see that the left trigger is warp speed. The right trigger is the sound effect trigger, which makes sense. That's the one that had the kind of play button on it. Uh, the left analog stick controls the throttle, as well as the anti-spin, or spin adjustment. And then the right stick controls the direction, which is pretty standard for most of these types of designs. Okay, so according to the instructions, this does in fact charge using your computer and not using the remote control. So that's a bit of a bummer, but it also makes this a little bit easier to deal with because you can go buy a cheap USB battery bank and you can recharge this on the go. And then you don't have to worry about buying rechargeable double A's or whatever for your remote because it's not gonna use a lot of juice. 
So I guess with all that being said and it being out of the box, it's time to get it up and running and see how well it works. I certainly hope that it survives the first flight. Uh, they're designed to be used by kids, and I'm hoping my skill level is a little bit above that, which means that we should be able to get it up in the air just fine, and uh, we'll see how it flies. So ultimately, how was the USS Enterprise drone? Well, ultimately, I thought I was going to have to control my fanboyism because I really wanted to like it. But it sucks. The flight on it was terrible. It was not easy to control. Even once it was trimmed in, it would only stay trimmed in for a couple of seconds. It would lose altitude for seemingly no reason, even indoors. And uh, the end of the flight clip there, where it suddenly red alerts and falls to the ground, that was really common. After charging it two or three times, that was all the usable footage I could get where it looked like I was semi in control. And I have flown both cheap and expensive drones before, and the idea of this and the design of it, I thought it was going to work. Uh, other problems, the controller was broken out of the box. I managed to get it working, sort of. The power button on it doesn't want to stay on, so it intermittently would turn on and off, and it was terrible. Um, the sound effects are pretty cool, I will admit that. The sound effects come out nice and clear. And there is a sensor on here that watches for instability and sets off the red alert, but since it was unstable most of the time, it went from being really cool, it warned you when I'm in danger, to oh god, not again. So unless you're a huge Star Trek fan, I really... I, 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 can't, I can't suggest this to anybody. Uh, it feels like a bit of a waste of money for me, even at the $80 mark. I'm glad I didn't pay full price for it. Uh, if you're a collector, it might be alright for you, but for me, it's going to be a thumbs down. So hopefully this review helps you guys. If it did, toss me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. Uh, if you're new, subscribe and click the bell so you're notified when I put out new content. And until next time, don't buy this, but stay creative.